Hello everyone, and I wanted to come on and do a little mini session to kind of analyze where we've been and where we are and where I'm currently sitting. First, I'd like to say, Gary V, that you are a lovely individual and that's real emotion that you're experiencing. That's very painful for me. So I want you to know that I'm kind of like, this is how it works over here, so you're aware of two spaces of knowing and delusion and hanging out in delusion and the unknown. So it's like the unknown is the line of knowing thyself, like knowing you, knowing you and wanting to believe that you are that person. So we'll say thyself. So grounded, I guess thyself would really kind of be over here, but it teeters into delusion of everybody, every guy or every person that you get trained as a person that, because we watch it with men and women on platform that they do this to people and then you're participating in it. So then I have the evidence and then she's bragging. And there's like gluttony and then like that shallow behavior that doesn't, like I really don't want that lifestyle, but it's not the actual, like I realize that you're on a yacht and the yacht is business. It's really not an enjoyable thing. It's like you're working and stuff, but it's the vision. So it's like seeing it and then living in reality. But that's like over there in unreachable territory. And then I experienced myself in uh, resentment and anger and wanting to express it. But then also, this is the hard part because I literally would never say any of those things. But what we're doing is we're educating. So what we're doing is Kanye West, what I, like he's the guinea pig, I'm the guinea pig. And we're like, him and I are like playing a role of real, this is real shit. So I'm not playing off of who he is. I'm playing off the brain and image that he is portraying. You want to understand that that's how people think. That's what happened with Kanye West. So we're teaching as if you are living in the brand and image of what it develops for you because men fall for that shit. And so in order for it to, this is, you chose this path by the way. So you trying to unwind me out of it is great because it gives me little hits of knowing, but there's a constant hit of Travis Kelsey, Jason Kelsey, um, travels to Bev Bell Beverly Hills. So that they can abuse me, but that's real shit. They do this to people in industry of celebrity, but they do it to people in general. And so it's important for me to have shown it this way, I guess. I guess I'm giving you why it's happening like this. And I didn't, I didn't actually know it was happening until I, I had insights to why I was doing this. I'm literally in the, in the moment of not knowing, like questioning everything about who he is. They went to Dubai and they posted pictures. I found evidence of him, sh her showing up at the, uh, cause I haven't, I haven't looked at her Instagram page in uh, God knows how long. That's, this is what happens when I open up her Instagram page. Everything in life for people derails. That's how this is 9-11 shit. The concern is that you're posing for it, which I continuously tell you. She thinks she's getting great attention to fuel her brand and image. And the evidence is in the comment section to approve of it. But you want to understand that people don't have logics in their brain. They actually do approve of it in the world of 
those of us who work for a living. See, I'm not actually going to work every day and I, and I have the ability to do the research that it takes, but Joe Schmo, who just met you, doesn't know 15 years before you of who you are as a person. And then the youth starts thinking that's normal behavior. And so that becomes a new norm of society is to do this on the internet. And that's their plan. So that they can actually, what her plan is, is because I know you're doing some shit. Because there were hits where she, you can't come in and you annihilate her with some things that, like I know she is angry and pissed off about things that you're saying and doing. Um, but I, like, okay, so where, where was I? She's very weak, I will tell you that. In comparison to her ability to, um, well, she's literally still like in the baby stages of anything that she's ever done in life. She has no leadership skills. She's no, she has no technology knowledge. She's like low level energy. She's not a celebrity and everyone who sees her are like annoyed with her, but she portrays it as a brand and image that everybody is, it's the opposite. And so then it, it fools people. And then it's hard for me to, to register because there's no evidence. I have no evidence to know really, like normal people in life have evidence that, that all of the things that you're portraying in knowledge is real. However, I don't have no evidence in able to evolve you other than the image and brands that you're creating. I mean, I think that's pretty talented, I would say. And this is, this is for everyone to, to, to be aware of. Because, like, someone, I'll just say, I was, I was going to say Braxton as an example. Of fall, like, he could have fallen for Alex Earl. And fallen for that shit. And then all this shit that's happening between... Me and Gary would be his existence. And then I wanted to, actually what came up for me in this too was the snatch of the brand. And so I know it looks like I tried to brand snatch, but I brought awareness to the brand snatch. I brought awareness to things that you as, even the company that you were at where she walks in the room and disrupts, no one even in the room thought that. Because it's a brain fuck. That's why restoring integrity with time is an important thing because you disrupt the entire meeting with your presence just showing up with frantic feelings and then it hinders the process for success of the business. And so it's perfect because we're in a conference and we're learning shit. So the image is of Gary getting in trouble. You should be actually getting a bonus because you literally taught. See, this is the problem with people in business. They don't really think in terms of business. They, they think in terms of nasty. It's nasty. It's a nasty business. Everything is nasty. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. And if you were, if you have anything to say to me in that business meeting that you were at, I will fucking destroy you. You little wusses are wimpy as fuck. I don't give a fuck. You're Democrats. If you're in California, you're goddamn brainwashed. You do understand that, right? There's your sign. Let me give you an example. This is the way California thinks. My grandmother is dead. She just died like two weeks ago. Adios, bitch. And the neighbor, in 45 years ago, there was, there's a trailer where my uh, family member used to live. And now that the lady's dead, the neighbor came over to the house and said, can you move the trailer? Because 45 years ago, we used to park our cars here. That's not a celebrity. That's not an influencer. 
That's not anyone other than just a person who is entitled by living in California. That's the Democrat mindset. So whether you are in a Republican voting out of California, I want you to know collectively as the entire state, every state who's Democrat has been trained to think like that. Do you understand a psychosis of brainwashing that comes from being part of a cult called the Democrats? That's why people can't think clearly outside of the abortion conversation of reproductive freedom. It's not your right to kill an innocent child because you don't want to pay for it. That's why the firemen have the boxes. That's why there's places to go if you want to hide about the pregnancy. The Democrats live in selfishness. They want these women producing content and they like it. They like the gossip and drama. They don't have people skills. They admit they don't have people skills. They bring out the worst in people and then say, no, I didn't do that, which makes people more angry. They lie to your face when we know they're lying and they still lie to your face. This is all characteristics of a Democrat. You might be Republican living in a Democrat state. You turn into a Democrat. You don't like to have real conversations of opinion or factual information. You just say, don't talk like that. Stop it. People in the Democrat live off of money focused, the least amount of work with the most money. They don't like to be told what to do. They only like to tell people what to do. However, they don't know how to be leaders. They don't want to risk their reputation of saying, no, that's not going to work. Because once you say no to them, it's like a battleground. See, usually when people are working in collaborative teams of teamwork, you're like conversating on multi, multiple ideas. Or you're the boss and there's like de in dental, there's only one way to do things. And then there's some things that are multiple ways of doing things. And then together as a dentist and a hygienist, you create a relationship in teeter-tottering, in weaving in and out of that conversation. And then it all works. When ultimately the health of the patient is ultimately the priority. Democrats don't think like that. The new modern hygienist does only what she wants to do and then uses lust tax tactics with patients and dentists. It's disgusting. And then acts like the hero. Now, when I talked a little bit, actually, I kind of got some awareness around, the, I, I really am trying to figure out where these ideas that, that you all would think that I think, I was going to do some videos about, in my opinion, how I got, that's all you're going to get at VCon, minus maybe a couple of them. How I got... That's how you got, but you're not educating on anything you learned. You're, you're giving us only action of manipulation and convincing. So you're going to watch the model lie out her ass and talk a lot about bullies. She's going to I already going to know, I already know what she's going to talk about her weight, bullying, 
she's going to talk about uh, staying focused on your dreams and those types of conversations. We got, um, let's see, I can't th really think of anybody who's going to be there. Peg Moore is going to bring down the energy so badly that she will never make it in the business. She's a horrific person. She already, even me seeing the fact that she was speaking is going to destroy her. Like she's already fucking shitting herself. It's like taking something. <laughs> it's like taking something that could potentially be up here and pushing it all the way down here. And then everybody's, oh, everybody's going to say, great job, awesome job. And then you as the audience are going to leave and go, what the fuck just happened? So if I wasn't here, then this would be all worthless. Like sh showing up to VCon would literally just be a party session. But I can only assume that you actually want to get something in evolution to what I've created and taught you so far. You're going to want to watch out for white clothing. If she wears another white outfit, you know there's corruption there. Actually, anything she wears, there's going to be a purpose behind what she wears. And then that's your job to figure it out. She's going to be, it's going to be fucking nasty. You're probably not going to see me in a very good mood at all. And I'm probably going to destroy your asses that whole week. I might not, I might just be coming out of the delusion and I might be going back into the delusion. I'm not really sure. But there is still resentment inside me against Gary Vee for what he's done to me. And now I'm stepping back into the delusion. I've produced quite a bit of content all for the week of this coming week for the festival, the Republican Party. And I've produced quite a bit of content for the rest of the month, to be honest with you, and into VCon. And I'm producing, going to be producing a lot more content. And I haven't had any fun doing the videos. And I'm, I forced myself to do the videos. Well, actually, I really didn't force myself to do it. I just did them. Anything else I want to say? Uh, recommended that you attend this VCon, but I'm going to tell you right now that I have a dirt, I have a yucky, gross, nasty, don't even want to take a look at it experience around VCon at this point. And I guess that's why you should go. Because you all think that business is all uh, what they're showing you. And this is the dirt. And I'm sure you're probably going to go. You're probably already, like, you're going to have uh, guests that are there that are just like them. That are planted and plotted just like, a, you're basically going to the Na uh, Republican National Convention. And what will piss you off the most is Gary's behavior. That's, I guess that's for me. They're trying to bring Dubai here, just to let everybody know. It's the best way I can describe it, so that you can get kind of a visual on what they want for this country, but we don't thrive off that nasty shit. We don't, we won't, we won't thrive off Dubai's nasty shit. This is how greedy these motherfuckers are. Remember the, the countries that he's attended in this last year that were Middle East or just countries in general? Remember where he has 
marketing companies. Remember about delusion and how delusion is a clouded mind of unclarity, which is why self-awareness is so important. It doesn't really matter about what other people are up to. Except it matters 100% to me what other people are up to. Because that's the game. There it is again. Me, you, the delusion of this group which is all based on feeling. So this would be professional. This is actually clear. I'm getting clearer on this to explain it. So me and professionalism and you as yourselves. This is for the sane individual. Don't give a shit about you. Don't give a shit about you. I give a shit about those who are interested in the information. Okay, so an example would be, that's the information. That's me delivering it. That's you delivering your information. Around each information bubble is jealousy, evil, non-talented. Okay? And then look, like we'll just say appearance. We'll put appearance out here. This is for Republican National Convention as well as VCon. They're going to try to whitewash you constantly to forget what they've done. That's, that's your sign. If you see white, you know that this, there's some shit going down. You see somebody wearing white, there's shit going down. If they say, if they say in my opinion... They're not speaking to business or speaking to what I'm about to show you. Then there's the third party, which is going to be Peg Moore in this case. I fucking hate that fucking bitch. Everybody fucking hates her, by the way. That's an example of people who just do not care. Like, what exactly are you going to fucking talk about? How you're much, you're a fucking whore, bitch. Anyway, she's going to go over to Gary. And like, I don't know if you saw the video that I posted, but do that, do that shit. Gratitude, graciousness, gratitude, graciousness. And try to rock him out of his strength. Which is all associated to me. Then in the contract, there's probably something where he posts it. To imply that you too can be successful, which will piss me off. Because that's not success. That's a free, that's an eighth place trophy. She's an eighth place trophy. She has nothing to offer. So then she'll stir up shit over here. And all of this right here is all emotion based. But it's like digging at not even wounds. But shooting you with bullets. This is modern day business with these women. And then when she leaves that conference, she'll still sit at whatever number she is. With the expectation that you as audience are going to do what she says. Because she's being taught by Mona Vand. You don't think that it was a coincidence that Peg Moore speaking at 2024... And she was put in front of me in line in VCon 2022. Imagine that as somebody over here. Imagine that. You're like excited to see the love of your life. And they interrupt it with a vicious bitch who's involved in the Ponzi scheme. 
And then you have to look at her bitch ass. And then you're standing there at that point. You don't really know that there's a real big pond. You don't really understand what's going on in the Ponzi scheme. So you try to be friendly. And then you're like, literally do some like, um, things to assist her which then takes it a whole new level for her where she gets awarded while the whole time she's trying to fucking uh, drive a plane into your building. And you didn't even know it because that's actually real business. That's, how, that's the naive, naivety, na na naive behavior that I'm speaking to folks. See, I'm from a small town in Georgia And I'm not used to that kind of bullshit from bitches like that. But when you play a big game like I'm playing, you are involved in bitches like that. But she's a small player. Anyway, the point is, is they're going to be working off the emotions of, that's not true, lies. That's not true, lies. Copying, your, copying some of your shit. No, copying some of your shit, people, whoever's going to be there. Uh, gloating, pretentious, and all the negative things that are the opposite, but then teaching you that she's all the positives. And that's what they're all going to be doing. Because they don't actually understand real business. They understand um, how it, what gets them ahead in the game of likability factor. Do you understand that the way they, that they speak to you doesn't bring results? Even if you're, even if your numbers grow, think about that for a moment. Even if your numbers grow in fans and followers, that doesn't get results except for you winning and everybody else losing. That is a big message that I want everyone to understand. You as a real person, is more valuable in not knowing shit than any of these people out there with millions of followers. You living in the curiosity of what someone has to tell you is more valuable than what any of these bitches at the, at the conference are gonna have to tell you. However, what the problem is, is everybody thinks they know what they're fucking talking about. That means you don't have conversations with people. You have right fighting of each other. I did this and I did this and I did this and me and this and this and this and this and this. We're such great friends. We're such great friends. Oh yeah, look at this. Look at my numbers grow. Look at my numbers grow. Uh, what about the audience? Well, what about them? I'm rich. Well, the whole purpose of internet is to help people. No, it's, a, it's for me to look sexy. It's for me to get a ring. It's for me to make money. It's for me to do this, 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 and this. I'll convince you. I'll say it so much and so often in a way that's so believable and a tone that's so kind and friendly. No one could ever say no to me. Example is, <clears throat> I don't even like to do this, but it's important to know that you always say no to everybody. You always say no to everybody. Hello. Hi. Oh, it's so nice to see you. Nice. Hello. Because this is a new way of business that we have to operate because of women like uh, all these people showing up at the conference and, and influencers. That is what's di dying is the old way of business, which is a handshake. That's what's dying. Because it'll be like, um, well, I'm really friendly. I'm really friendly too. Do you want to do something for me? Oh, yeah, I'd love to. You're going to help me, right? Yeah, I'll help you. Um, okay, so what did you say? Oh, yeah, okay. Um, you know what? I'm really not that interested in working with you. Okay, thanks. Now they got a hit off of your joy and then you're left in the dump. But it's bigger than that, if that makes any sense. It has to do with like a person that has a lot of followers. This is only for people who have a common sense. So a person that has 
uh, up, uplifting boosting get, gets an unfair playing field because they're they're using bots to get confidence and they use that confidence to railroad over everybody to run them over see the difference is is i said railroad over donald trump you're on the train so they run you over and with donald trump you're on the train so you're going to, to, you're on the train. Do, do. Come on, ride the train and ride it. With them, you're not on the train. You're being tied up and they're running you over constantly. That's influencer marketing. And they get a hit off of it. Reactions give them a hit. Good reactions give them a really good hit. And then a bad reaction gets them doing shit that, because they're dead inside. They don't really do, no, do much. So right now my eyes went to the, to the iPad. That's called control. I've been controlled by the Instagram account known as Monavand. And that's what I want to admit to you, that that's what she does. That's bad. That's Middle Eastern culture. So if you think you have control over it, you really don't. So right now, my eyes just went over. I picked up the iPad to go look at her account. To watch her hug on Gary. To watch her kiss Gary. To watch her hold his hand. To bring pain inside me. To bring resentment and jealousy inside me. That's what jealousy really actually feels like. Well, actually, I really feel jealousy. Jealousy feels different for me. Uh, it's more like uh, resentment. I say resentment. But I guess resentment and jealousy can kind of feel the same. Let me see. Let me feel jealous about something. Um, my jealousy is so different though. I don't really have jealousy. Let me see. Well, I'm jealous that my mom is with the dogs. Okay. So let me be jealous about that for a second. <laughs> Hold on. What am I jealous about? What should I be jealous about? Uh, I don't care about it. I don't really want a private getaway. Okay. I'm jealous. No, I'm not jealous about that either. I'm jealous. What could I be jealous about? No. I'm having a hard time being jealous. What should I be jealous about? That's jealousy right here, I guess. Je I'm je Gary, I'm jealous that you're drinking that coffee. God, I'm so jealous. God, I'm so jealous that I'm not there with you. Gary, I'm really jealous that I'm not there kissing and hugging on you. I'm jealous that I'm not eating dinner with you. I'm jealous that you're going to Beverly Hills and riding in cars with her and not me. I think jealousy brings for me maybe tears because the kind of jealousy that she's trying to present to me isn't, she doesn't understand it. She doesn't really understand what love is. So it's like, she doesn't understand what jealousy is. She has jealousy over clothes and trips and hair and makeup and the way people look and people getting attention and people getting intelligence. Hers is like a burning jealousy. Remember, I experienced a burning jealousy because of her. She's burning jealousy over me. Because I'm so put together, actually. Yeah, I am. This pain, I'm, not, I'm just going to analyze myself a little bit. Um, oh, I am jealous that I can't, I'm not with the kids, but it's not the kind of jealousy the parents think the jealousy is. See, Paris Hilton posts those photos to try to make me feel jealous. 
But jealousy to me is like in the air because I believe in abundance. And that's what is important that you'll never get with people like that because they enjoy making people jealous and abusing people to get the feeling of jealousy on them. I don't know, but it's very strange that I like, I'm like very popular. I'm a very popular per I've always been popular in the sense of, of everybody who comes into contact with me is interested in hearing what I have to say. And they're always saying, where's Cassandra? Like I've told you this story before when I was a server, I was always the one to be the team leader to take the most challenging, um, individuals like they could, could rely on me to get shit done so i'd be like well cassandra can take that patient or cassandra can do that and i'd be like do i have to and then i'd always feel a little resentment if they chose somebody else but i wouldn't say anything because i'd be like oh well, at least i'll have to do it but i always like that experience of being the one to do the hard stuff But not in a way that's like on a pedestal either. More like I can do this like a challenge. <laughs> and you're like, you can handle it. You can do this. I'm like, I guess you're right. I can. So I get a little pep talk from somebody else. Or they'd be, I don't know. What else do I want to say about this? Um, what else do I want to say? That's all I really have at this point. We're probably going to go back into the resentment place because I kind of feel like it. And yes, I know my hair needs to be dyed, but you know me, I always like to wait till like it's way far along before I dye it because I just hate, hate, hate dyeing my hair. I like fucking hate it. Chris, I fucking hate dyeing my hair. I really do not like it. It's such a waste of time and I know it looks terrible, but we're probably going to wait and do it tomorrow because I was supposed to do it today, but I'm going to do it tomorrow instead. And everybody keeps saying, dye your hair, dye your, I don't want to. I'm going to do it one more day. Um, anything else? I think that's it. I think that's all I got. And then we're probably going to go back into the game of bullshit. So we got that. So I want to remember one last thing is everybody's playing their own little game, which is your, basically your game is like what you're, you're here and your purpose, the way you live your life, how you are, your personality traits, right? And then you have a leader at the front of the room, which we're going to say it's Gary. And you all like to put blame on him when you're all, I'm talking to all of you. Everybody's got a motivator in their life somewhere. You just are asleep thinking I'm specifically talking to him. And even Gary, if put into the mix of the crew, everybody's bouncing off each other. All this energy. Right? Now we're working in internet and we're cross. I'm, I'm making, oh, I want to say this too. I'm making lots of content. Lots. Like one person. Like I'm not. Split up into, I'm doing all of it. No one, no one in history has been able to do this much content by themselves. And I'm doing Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, True Social, Pinterest, which I'm really enjoying Pinterest, YouTube, and then I'm TikTok, and then I'm also trying to do Clapper, which I really, I just don't like Clapper. I think Clapper's dying out. I mean, it just isn't very interesting. So I'm probably going to delete Clapper. It's just, 
Anyway, um, now I'm, oh, and LinkedIn. And then I'm posting content, same content sometimes across all three or all five or all seven or whatever. And that splits you up into many places, which you don't understand if you, if you don't understand, you don't understand. And then I'm also producing old content and repurposing it as new content. And you want to, you might want to ask yourself of why I'm doing that is because it's, I actually do a lot of my content for myself. So I think my shit is really cool to look at. It's cool to look at and it also inspires. So when I, if like, like if I post create a, con a piece of content and then I post it and then I see it in a, in on a, on the fly, I go back to look and see what's posted cause I forget and I get excited by what I see, but I posted it. That means you probably get excited. And then within that, I'm also posting new content which is another layer. And then I'm making videos and then I'm commenting on Gary's content sometimes, which I'll try not to do anymore because I know it bugs you. Because really, honestly, what I said to you, it really is actually how I feel. That's how I get when, I, when someone's evil to me. True. Um, anything else to say about that? And, and then I'm constantly coming up with creative ideas. I mean, the elephants are the theme of this coming week. So just be ready for a lot of elephants. And that's not giving away the secret. I mean, it's obvious that the Republicans are elephants and Democrats are donkeys. And is there anything else? I feel like there's something else I wanted to say. Um, back to the gym. And you should have really be grateful for all the content that we've produced, that Gary and myself have produced in the last couple weeks. Because we really busted our asses for y'all. So this is all part of the VCon, the V Friends education. And that's it. That's all I got, I guess. I'm going to be probably watching some old stuff. Uh, and then everybody be, pre be prepared for Donald Trump picking his vice president. Even though I keep telling you that I'm the vice president, I keep telling myself that, that I can't be vice president and mother to a billion kids. So it is what it is. Either way, I'm going to be the advisor. So just be ready for when he chooses someone and don't be disappointed if it's not me. Because look at where we're at, folks. Am I going to VCon? As of today, I am not. Are you satisfied? I was thinking to myself how long it takes you to, for me to produce versus actually how long it takes for you to scroll. And I'm thinking, I don't think it takes you very long to scroll through it. <laughs> Maybe it does. I don't know. Shit. <laughs> okay, I'm getting off because now we're at 45 minutes. Okay, bye.